Okay, so good day, Fresh from the Flames. This is March, and this is a new week of our series of discussions for Gen 001, Proposive Communication. So we are done with the second periodic exam and these, these two lessons, okay, Lesson 16, which was discussed earlier by Mom Ivy, and Lesson 17 to be discussed by yours truly, marks the start of the third periodic grading. So this week, Lesson 17 is all about avoiding play plagiarism okay so before we delve into further with our discussion okay so here are your lesson objectives so at the end of the lesson the students will be able to review the guidelines in avoiding uh, plagiarism and you should also be able to practice doing a summary okay so what is it about you know plagiarism okay, so when you talk about plagiarism this is presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own okay without their knowledge without their consent and you incorporate it into your work without full acknowledgement okay so all published and unpublished material whether in in manuscripts or printed or electronic form is covered under this uh definition okay so plagiarism may be intentional or reckless or unintentional okay so that's the necessity to acknowledge other works others work or ideas applies not only to text okay again it doesn't apply only to text but also to other media such as you know computer codes or, or illustrations or graphs and so on okay it applies okay equally to published texts and data drawn from books or journals into unpublished texts and data such as your lectures or theses or other students essays okay so you must also attribute text data or other sources downloaded from websites now what is the issue here okay what's the issue with regarding you know with regards to plagiarism why should we avoid uh, plagiarism okay so it is important for us that uh, when we do our writings when we ha when we create essays when we write our articles it is important that we learn to develop our own strategy and our own voice okay you're not necessarily you know, you know you're not necessarily expected to become an original thinker at once okay but you are expected to be an independent one okay by learning to assess critically okay the work of others weigh up differing arguments and you know draw up your own conclusions okay so we we use other people's ideas because we wanted to you know expound further on our own writings if we are going to write our essays we want to use or we research for other people's ideas because we wanted to expound further on on our article or on our essays okay so uh, there are ways okay there are ways in order for us to avoid plagiarism in our articles essays or other writings there are proper ways to take into account when we want to you know use other people's ideas okay so, and first and foremost we have here what we call to quote okay so when you say to quote is to use the writer's actual words okay so when are you going to quote okay when is the instance that you are going to do quotations okay so you, you do quotations when the language that the author has used is very vivid and very expressive okay that when you when you try to do paraphrase it it doesn't seem to be the same as what the author has said so when you do quote you you actually quote uh, word for word by a uh, word for word of what the author has said okay maybe because the author has used very good words and the explanation was so good it was so vivid and very expressive 
when else? When else does you or when else do you、uh, do quotation? When exact wording is needed for technicalities, okay? For technical accuracy, okay? So that's also one time or one instance that you're going to quote. And another one is is when the words of an important authority lend weight to an argument. Okay, so let's say for example that that person where you gotten where you have gotten the idea is you know very expressive type of person and 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 by quoting what he have said okay or what he or she have said will put a lot of emphasis to to your writings okay so so how would you show okay how would you show that you are quoting. Okay, how will you show everybody, or how will you show your readers that you are properly quoting? Okay, so you have to name okay the source in an introductory phrase. Another is to use quotation marks or indent long quotations, and then you have to cite the、uh, source appropriately. So I'm going to give you. An example. Okay, so this is the original text, and then you are going to try to do a quotation based on the original text. So this is the original text. Okay, and this is just a one-paragraph text that came from a certain article. Okay, and when you do quotations, let's say for example you are researching in this kind of topic and you wanted to quote. The original、um, wordings of the person involved here, okay, or the person who authored this one. Okay, so uh, uh, this is the accurate quoting. Okay, so economist Lester Furo has asserted that the American reaction to globalization is different from that of the rest of the world. In that, okay, quote and quote,、uh, open quote. Okay, Americans fear globalization. Okay, less than anyone else, and as a consequence, okay, if 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 the statement is too long, think about it less than anyone. End quote. Okay, so where did we get this? Where did we get this part? Okay, this is this one here. Americans fear globalization less than anyone else, and as a consequence, they think about it less than anyone else. That's the quote. Okay, so why is this? Okay, why is this an accurate quoting? Okay, so why why is this a good quote? Okay, so number one is that the writer has introduced the quotation with his or her own words. Mom, which part? Okay, so this one here. Economist Lester Lester Furrow, okay, 1993, okay, has asserted that. The American reaction to globalization is different from that of the rest of the world. That's the introduction. Okay, but where did we get the 1993? Here. Okay, here's the source. Okay, in the original text, the source was written. Okay, so、uh, you have to research on the, the complete name. So, economist Lester Furo. Okay, so that's 1993. Okay, this is the introduction that you're going to、uh, include. Then、uh, the, the 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 writer okay has also named the source in an introduction phase. So this one, okay. So this one here, and、uh, the writer has also indicated where exact words of the source begin and end by using quotation marks. This one and this one, okay. And they even included the page, which is here. Okay, so that's a very accurate quoting. Okay, you don't just copy and paste、uh, word by word. Okay, from the original text, you have to introduce what you're going to copy as well. Okay, what you ha you have to introduce the text. Okay,、uh, that you're going to get from the original text. This is the original text. Then you have to introduce that as well. Okay, that's that's what you mean by quoting. Okay, that's how you do quoting. All right, you give an introduction, okay, with the, your own words, and then you have to name the source, and then you have to indicate where the exact words of the source begin and end by using quotation marks. Okay. Now we also have other ways on how we can use other people's ideas, and this is through paraphrasing. Okay, so when you say paraphrase, it means you know taking the words of Another source and restating them 
using your own vocabulary. Okay, so in this way, you you keep the meaning of the original text, but do not copy its exact wording. All right. So when you paraphrase, you try to uh, you try to uh, use. Uh, other words that has the same meaning as the words being used by the author. So this is the time you have to search for synonyms of words. Okay, you have to you have to search for other terms that has the same meaning as those words being used by the author. Okay, so I have here another example. Say, actually, this is a this is the same example as that of what we have used in in quotation. So this is the original text, and this is the accurate paraphrasing. So Lester Fruro, 1993, maintains that that because Americans see globalization simply as a bigger form of their own economy, they are less concerned about it than is the rest of the world. Okay, so which part there has been accurately paraphrased? Which, which in particular? Okay, when uh, Americans do think of uh, globalization, okay, so Americans fear globalization less than anyone else. So, less than anyone else. Fear globalization less than anyone else. And as a consequence, they think about it less than anyone. They think about it. Please take note of this one. They think about it less than anyone else. How was it paraphrased in the, in the next text? Okay, so they are less concerned about it than is the rest of the world. So they think about it less than anyone else. As if you if if you do accurate paraphrasing, they are less concerned about it. That is the rest of the world. Different words. Some of the words used are different, but it still conveys the same meaning. Okay. So that's how you paraphrase. You think about other words. Okay, that has the same meaning. Okay, as the original words or text or phrases or sentences that the author has used okay so why is this accurate so the, the writer has kept the meaning of the original message without copying words or structure words like globalization and americans are genetic terms okay so th these are terms that are commonly used for the concept they illustrate it is difficult to find synonyms okay for them thus you may use these words without placing them in quotation marks so that's how you accurately paraphrase a certain text okay you try to look for synonyms of words okay without you know without sacrificing the meaning the original meaning of the original text okay so another way of uh, doing a uh, or to use other uh, people's um, ideas is to do a summary or we summarize okay so this is a, when you say a, a summary okay is a synthesis of the key ideas of a piece of writing restated in your own words okay Paraphrase. Okay, you may write a summary as a standalone assignment or as part of a longer paper. Whenever you summarize, you must be careful not to copy the exact wording of the original source. And what is the difference between summarize and paraphrasing? When you when you paraphrase, the length of the composition is somehow the same. Okay, when you paraphrase an original text, okay, the length of the the, the, the length of the, the the writing will be somehow the same. But when you summarize, okay, when you summarize, okay, it becomes shorter. Okay, and you certainly use your own words here. All right. So how do you how do you summarize? Okay, so so a good summary identifies the writer of the original text. A good summary, okay, synthesizes the writer's key ideas. And a good summary presents the information neutrally. Please take note of that. You have to use a neutral language. You are not allowed to use a slanted language when you are doing a summary 
of another person's okay, article or ideas or essays okay, or writings. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so as you can see here, the original text composed composed of uh, is composed of two paragraphs. Now, what did I say a while ago about summarizing? When you summarize, it becomes shorter, and your when you summary. Okay, when you do a summary, all right, you have to use your own words. You have to explain it in your own words without sacrificing the min the, the original meaning of the original text. Okay, so again, how do you summarize? So, what are the characteristics of a good summary? It should identify the writer of the original text. So, where did where can we see it here? So, in a 2008 faculty faculty newsletter article. Okay, that's the source. Okay, that's the writer of the original text, and that, oh, oh, sorry, that's the uh, that's the article, and this is the original text. Okay, M MIT professor Emeritus Ernst G. Frankel. Okay, so that's the original. That's the author. That's the writer of the text, and and the the summary was also able to present where they got that uh, particular um, particular text. Okay, so the, 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 a good summary synthesizes the writer's key ideas. So you have to, you know, when you are reading an original text, you have to be uh, keen in understanding the whole text and determining the key points. And that's what you're going to summarize in your, in your, in your summary. Okay, and it should be, or the information must be presented neutrally. You cannot give your own opinion because this is going to be a slanted language now, okay? And you're not going to use a slanted language. You're going to use a neutral language for this one, okay? So in this example, okay, why is this a good summary? So the summary identifies the writer, this one, okay? The date of the publication, this one, and the source, this one, okay? That one, all right? and restates the key ideas using original wording the, the summary reports on the author's point of view but reports this neutral in, in in a neutral language okay so 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 that's how you do a summary so again how does it differ with paraphrasing paraphrasing when you do paraphrase you're just you know looking for other words to replace the original word sentence that the author has used okay so the length of the article the length of the writing or the length of the essay will be somehow the same but when you do summarize okay when you summarize a text okay sometimes or most of the time it's gonna be shorter all right and still the the proper citation is still present in your summary okay now in referencing okay when we say <clears throat> Uh, referencing all right okay so when we when we do referencing this is to acknowledge the writer okay and the reader where ideas came from so there are two ways or there are two places where referencing can be found okay so you can find find referencing in text or through a reference list reference list is usually at the end of an article okay so let's say for example if it's if it's a research research reference list is usually at the end okay in text referencing um, can be found in between your 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 sentences in between your paragraphs okay so that's how you can do referencing so again referencing can be in any of the two places or can be done in two places in text which is in the paragraphs of your essay or report and you can also find them as a reference list usually at the end of the essay or or of the report usually the last page okay of your essay or your report or your research so we have an example here all right so research by jones and Shao, 2014 shows that significant analysis has been carried out relating to these specific human resource management initiatives okay so if you are going to do referencing okay this is how you do referencing okay you you put the you put 
dates and you put the 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 fa the last names of the the authors okay so you can also do it like there has been a significant amount of data which has shown that these human resource management initiative initiatives have been thoroughly analyzed for effectiveness jones and Shaw, 2014 so that's in text okay you can find you can do in you, you can do referencing by including them in between paragraphs in between sentences as long as it um, it properly okay uh credits the the original authors okay now for a reference list which can be found at the last page of your essay or report you have to follow the APA format APA stands for American Psychological Association so they have a certain uh, format on how you should write your reference list okay so when you write references okay for a website you have to write the last name the first name the middle name and then you have to enclose in parentheses the year month or date published the article title and the link now for a book okay so again last name first name middle name and then the year month and date published okay mom how is it uh, how how are we going to do or what what are we going, what are we going to do if the the month and date is not present you have to put the year okay you have to put the year and then you have to write the title of the book and where the uh, book was published okay so city or the state and then the publishing house okay so in this example okay we have here uh, a book Okay, this is actually a book, reference list from a book. So, Paterno, M.E., 1993. So, this is the, the, the date published, okay? And then the title, The Girl Who Fell from the Sky and Other Classic Philippine Legends. And then you will see here the state or the city where the book was published. And afterwards, the last part will be the name of the publishing house, which is the Haran Books for Young Readers. So that's how you will write your reference list. That's how the, you know, the, that's the APA format. That's the American Psychological Association format. Okay, And we have to follow this when we create reference lists. Okay, so all of the things that you get and copy from the internet, from books, uh, through proper uh, quoting, uh, paraphrasing, and summary, summarizing, okay, you have to put them, you have to do proper referencing. You can do that in text or you can do it as a reference list. On the examples that we have given a while ago, okay, those are uh, examples of in-text referencing and for a uh, reference list okay this is actually being seen in researches okay and um, uh, research or or um, action uh, uh, action plans okay so the, there is a reference list at the end or as the last page of the book okay so uh yeah i'm gonna show you a supplemental video here okay about quoting paraphrasing and summarizing it will give you additional ideas on how you will be able to manage to do these things aside from those i have mentioned a while ago so please stay please watch the video that i have supplemented here quoting paraphrasing and summarizing in business writing, you often need to quote, paraphrase, or summarize someone else's ideas. To make your point powerfully and avoid plagiarism, you must learn how to properly refer to other people's work. A quotation is a set of words written or spoken by someone else, used just as they are with no variation. Let's look at an example of a direct quotation from an article called Instagram Co-Founders to Step Down about Instagram's founders from the September 25, 2018 edition of the Wall Street Journal. Here's the whole article, but we just want to quote this line. In order to use this quote in our writing, we need to indicate who said it and where it can be found in this way. The Wall Street Journal's technology contributor, Deepa Sitharaman, said, the two co-founders of Facebook Inc.'s popular Instagram app are stepping down a move marking continued tumult at the social networking giant. 
Notice that the highlighted sections indicate to the reader when you start and stop using the borrowed information. You'll need an introductory phrase and some sort of citation or reference each time you quote someone. A paraphrase is an altered version of someone else's words that retains the same meaning. You paraphrase someone when rephrasing their point will be more effective with your audience. For example, your paraphrase may contain less technical language or be less formal. According to Deepa Sitharaman, technology contributor for the Wall Street Journal, the two founders of Instagram are resigning, another sign of problems at Instagram's parent Facebook. You can also mix some direct quoting and some paraphrasing. According to Deepa Sitharaman, technology contributor for the Wall Street Journal, the two founders of Instagram are resigning from Facebook, a move marking continued tumult at the social networking giant. A summary is a shortened version of someone else's words and ideas, covering key points only. Here is the summary of the same passage from the Wall Street Journal article. Management turmoil continues at Facebook with the resignation of Instagram's co-founders, according to the Wall Street Journal's Deepa Sitharaman. Here's an important point. You need to tell your reader who originated the idea you are using and signal why the person is credible. Here, we signal Deepa Sitharaman's credibility with this introductory phrase. The Wall Street Journal's technology contributor, Deepa Sitharaman, said, If you have more information about the source that will help support your point, insert that information, but don't go overboard like in this example. The Wall Street Journal's technology contributor, Deepa Sitharaman, who previously worked for Reuters covering e-commerce and lives in San Francisco, said, The highlighted information is too much and not pertinent and should not be included. A pertinent piece of information that we should add is this. The Wall Street Journal's technology contributor and Facebook expert Deepa Sitharaman said, the two co-founders of Facebook, don't just plop other people's thoughts into your writing. After you insert a quote, paraphrase, or summary, demonstrate its value and context. Explain to your reader why you included it and why that idea supports or illustrates your argument. Indicate the what, then the so what of the borrowed idea. For example, consider this quotation. Now let's add a what and a so what that demonstrate your own thoughts. The what is, by removing the Instagram co-founders and replacing them with Facebook's own executives, Facebook can control the app more closely. The so what is, this bid for control might indicate a fear of unbridled innovation at this point in Facebook's history. To be fair and avoid plagiarism, be sure you include a citation or link to the original source of the idea. Here are three ways to cite a source. In-text citations immediately followed a borrowed idea. They are quick internal references to a source, but need to be paired with fuller citation information in EndNotes. Footnotes appear at the bottom of a page and are paired with small raised numbers in the text. EndNotes appear at the end of a piece. Here's an example. Hyperlinks are a convenient way to cite your sources because the link takes the reader directly to the original source. However, you can use these only in documents that will be used digitally. Here's what's called a long tail URL. More effectively, hide the long URL under the actual article title. Which citation style you use depends on the requirements of the document. Search the web for specific citation rules for a particular style like APA or MLA. Weaving other people's good ideas or vivid language into your writing strengthens it. Just make sure you quote, paraphrase, and summarize correctly so you fairly credit the author and increase your own credibility. All right, so yeah. 
so he mentioned a lot of things that I have also mentioned a while ago and he also added ways on how we can do referencing so I discussed about um, in text and the reference list okay and he he added about full footnotes okay uh, those numbers that you see when you read articles in in um, in in internet okay when you find articles in the internet you will see some numbers okay and those numbers are actually in reference to a footnote at the end of the article so that's uh, that's actually a footnote okay so those are the different ways on how we can avoid plagiarism in our writings okay by learning these ways okay prevents us from copying and pasting sources we get from the internet okay so this is a way for us to grow independently okay when it comes to our writing skills as well as for us to give authors their you know due credit especially when we have to use their ideas okay so that concludes our discussion on lesson 17 avoiding plagiarism for gen 001 purposive communication so for questions and clarification okay on our topic you may send me a message privately or through our subject group chat okay so thank you very much for watching this video and i hope you have learned a lot in our topic okay so till our next discussion goodbye guys